Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester Certification. As a part of this tutorial, we are still in chapter two and getting into the details of the chapter two, we have discussed about three topics. It's time to move into the next one that is 2.4 comparison. As a part of this tutorial, we have two sub-segments, that is 2.4.1, Objectives of A-SPICE and ISO 26262, and 2.4.2, Comparison of the Test Levels. So as a part of this particular segment, we are actually trying to compare that how exactly some of the fundamentals which we learned as a part of foundation can be related to these automotive standards like A-SPICE and ISO 26262. And the most important thing is to make the testers uh, with that comfort level to understand that when you started testing and probably you know some of the fundamentals and concepts, you must not have any kind of confusions and contradictions with the uh, standards which we make use of in the automotive tester or automotive industry. So there are several standards that propose requirements to the product development. Typically, these highlights different aspects in the development and the ISO 26262 as well as ASPICE are compared here regarding their objectives. ISO 26262 has the objective of avoiding risk from systematic failures in the development and hardware failures in the operation by presenting suitable requirements and the processes. For the development of e, &E systems, it defines the requirements for the process and methods to be used by the tester. These depends on the ASL level of the item. So yes, we, in the previous tutorials, when we went through all different standards like ASPICE and ISO 26262, we understood that how exactly the safety critical is being handled with different methodologies, different standards, and various volumes which addresses the uh, standards to be used and the methodologies to be applied at any point of time. Whereas when you talk about the ASPICE, it serves the purpose of determining the capability of the product development process within the framework of assessments. To do so, ASPICE defines accessible criteria for these purposes. In contrast to the ISO 26262, these are independent of criticality and of the product's ACL level. Further, when you talk specific to comparison of the test levels, uh, yes, we have a very wonderful table here comparing all the things. So yes, we have understood all these concepts in our previous tutorials. If you have not covered that, please refer to the AISO 26262 and ASPICE respective tutorials to understand them first and then come to the comparison, which will help you to understand that how we are trying to relate these activities to the automotive standards. Both ISO 26262 and ASPICE describe the test level. Levels. However, these are not completely consistent with the test levels from the CTFL, that is foundation level. Therefore, for an efficient and effective collaboration, testers should have a common understanding of all the test levels. The term system used in ASPICE and the term system and items used in ISO 26262 refers to a product consisting of hardware as well as software component. Because we talk about automotive industries, a lot of components are embedded systems where it is a combination of software as well as hardware. Because not alone hardware can make a component there or probably not alone software can finally make an end product. The foundation level syllabus, however, referred to software when using the term system, right? It was just limited to a software there in the foundation. But in the automotive industry, the final software here, it's or system generally stands for the combination of software and hardware, which is generally called as the end product. Therefore, the test levels for ISTQB can be mapped to the test levels in the ISO 26262 and ASPICE as follows. So on the left, the very first column talks about the various test levels from the foundation. We have acceptance test, system test, system integration, and system of system, which is from the point of system uh, overall a comparison between integration of system and system. And then we have component integration testing as well as component testing. If you relate acceptance testing to ISO, we have safety validation under volume four to nine, and then ASPICE doesn't have anything specific to that, no equivalent. So if you follow all the standards as per ASPICE, your acceptance testing is not supposed to be conducted, which is already covered as a part of a lot of other testing steps, which we generally perform.
For systems of systems test, that is the final end product, we have a system integration and test as per the ISO, which is equivalent for system integration test as well, because in foundation, system integration testing is all about integrating software and hardware. And here, we just have two different levels, uh, that is systems of systems or system integration. Whereas if you talk about ASPICE, the system qualification test under SYS5 and system integration test under SYS.4. So different volumes and different parts are always there to address the same thing. When you come to system test, verification of the software safety requirement, volume 6 to 11, and component integration test, software integration and test. Whereas for ASPICE, similarly, we do have SYS6, that is the software qualification test and software integration test as software point five. When we talk about the component test, of course, we do have something in ISO that is software unit test between six to nine and software unit verification for the ASPICE, which is SWE software engineering for part four for that. So here we are just trying to make sure that how you can relate some of the context which you're learning as a part of the software uh, automotive standards that you can relate it back to the basic terminologies which we would have understood from the foundation level. Otherwise, it will become quite complicated to have a lot of questions in your mind that what exactly happened to the different levels when we talk about the automotive tester. So here, we confirm you that based on this comparison that all the test levels are being conducted no matter what type of standard do you follow or you follow a combined approach of both of them. At the end, of course, we do have test techniques which we follow as a part of our testing. And even in foundation, we learned a lot about these techniques like equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, state transition, decision table. These are black box. Similarly, we have white box, experience based, defect based, and a lot of other things. So according to CTFL, the test techniques are mostly applicable independently from the test level. That means they are not specific to any particular test level. At any point of time, if you think that a technique is helpful to derive minimum number of test cases for maximum coverage, you can apply that technique at any level. Whereas when it comes to ASPICE, it also does not generally assign any technique to the test level. Therefore, both leave the choice to the tester that wherever you think it is applicable, you can make use of it and apply them as necessary. When it comes to the ISO 26262, on the other hand, there are individual method tables which we saw in the previous tutorials when we were talking about the ASIL, that is Automotive Safety Integrity Level, we had four levels A, B, C, D, starting being A as the lowest and D being the highest of the safety integrity level. These provide the tester with the recommendation depending on the ASIL level as to which technique should we apply at that point of time. So yes, except ISO, other techniques help or other approaches, other standards help you to decide where you can apply which technique as per the need. But when it comes to ISO, it has a table. We call it as method table, which will be used in order to determine what will be the best recommended at that point of time. So as a part of this tutorial, we just wanted to compare the basic standards with the automotive specific standards and understand that how exactly each thing can be related and performed within automotive testing. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.